Welcome and thank you for joining EK Expo CES 2024. This is the first of four videos from this exciting Las Vegas tech event, which means we have a lot prepared for you over the next several days. So be sure to stay tuned for all of our CES 24 Expo videos brought to you directly from this magical Las Vegas. I'm Kat and I'm here at the EK Mandalay Bay Suite for CES 2024. We're really excited to be here and we'll be featuring videos online every single day that we're at the show. Our team is here to welcome you and we look forward to seeing you. Please also check out our latest products. We have Dave and Joe that are going to show you our lineup here and we look forward to seeing you. Thank you, Kat. Yeah, today we're in this lovely suite, and today we're looking at EK Quantum products. Joe, what have we got? So, to head things up, we have the latest Z790 products for uh, the latest Intel motherboards. On the left and the right, we have two traditional monoblocks, and in the middle is a bridge block, which can be added on top of a Velocity uh, to link the integrated VRM cooler of the Maximus formula. Okay, um, so what would be the benefit of linking the velocity with the bridge? Uh, so you can you could link it with fittings, you could okay. choose not to link it and leave it passively cooled, or you could link it with the block. Um, the block looks a bit neater. Uh, one advantage you have if you use it with a distribution plate is it lines the ports up directly with all of our reflection twos. Okay. Uh, so it's a little bit simpler to build the loop, whereas if you used uh, the standard block with the bridge and the distro plate together, you'd need to make two sets of fittings and a slight offset uh, either at the front end on the distro or on the CPU and join them all in series. So right. it would be a bit more complicated and you would probably use more fittings than the bridge block costs. Right, awesome. So I see that this is actually in white compared to before with everything being black. Yep. Is that going to be for this motherboard only with the motherboard being white or is that something that we're going to see more of? Yeah, that's right. Since this is a white motherboard, we made the bridge block in white and you can also now get the Velocity 2 in white. If you have a Velocity 2 for LGA 1700 already, we also now released an upgrade kit so you can change it to a white version, then add the bridge block and you have a really low cost to upgrade this formula. Awesome. For me, I love white and everything, so that's uh, music to buy ears. I'm, 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 I'm happy with that. So are these all Matrix 7 compatible, I assume? Yes, or... yep, yep. Well, all three align the ports in exactly the same position, so you can make the horizontal connection to any reflection to a distro plate. You just need a 28 millimeter extender on these and a seven millimeter extender on the formula because it's much higher when you stack the blocks. I right, got you. So with these being mono blocks, obviously they're made custom for these boards. So yep. which ones will these actually fit? So they are specific to the latest Z790 boards. On the left, we have the Aorus Master. Uh, it does come with a plate that allows you to install the original IO heatsink back. Okay. Uh, the original LAN heatsink for the LAN controller also goes back under there. Uh, and then you can screw it all together and it looks just like the original board, except without the VRM cooling, uh, or with the air cooling for the VRM. And this one is specific to the Z790 Dark Hero. It does vary slightly from the original Z790 Hero, but only in the mounting and the standoffs. Okay, awesome. And obviously the white one is just for that board. It is for that board, but it is also backwards compatible with the previous Z790 formula, so if you want to change it to white, you can now get this one. Nice, that's what you want. So you've seen what we had to offer over there. Now we've got all the brand new products in this lovely round table. Joe, what have we got? So first up, let's take a look at the most forward looking. We have the new line of Kinetic 3 and Volume 3 FLTs. Okay, so what's new about these? Like, what, what's the difference between this and the old ones? So the first thing, we're adding new sizes. So here we see 140 and 280. 
as well. Before we only had 120 sizes, 214, 360. Uh, so we're making bigger ones. And fundamentally, the pump has now moved to the front. Okay. There are three sets of ports on the sizes that allow it. So there's one set under the pump, one set on the reverse side, and one set on the edge. Okay, nice. So you said this is the first one of the third series. So yes. what happened to the second series? We skipped the second series and the second design language because this will be a, a product that's with us for a lot longer. Typically we keep reservoirs for at least uh, three or five years. Okay. Uh, around about that. So because this will be out for the majority of its lifespan alongside third gen products, Vector 3, Velocity 3, uh, we skipped ahead to the third gen. Okay, awesome. And obviously, they do look a little bit more sleek. They, they, they seem like they toned down a little. So what visual changes have we got? Yeah, so the updates that you can see for the third generation design language are very tight, like uh, hard angles on the corners. So the uh, standout element sweeps away and you have really sharp points on the plexi and a very fine, thin standout. So it takes up less space on the product. Uh, we, we get LEDs like tight to pack against the edge uh, and, and it's uh, complementary of our existing products, but also a little bit forward looking. Awesome, they look great. And obviously with the RGB showing off like this, they're definitely something that you can see inside a lot of systems. Yeah. What else have we got on show? So the next thing to look forward to there is a combination of the surface radiator with the kinetic FLT pump reservoir. So you're saying it's a radiator, but also a reservoir and a pump? Yes, and there's also cooling for the pump in it as well. So it's four things, I guess, if you want to take it that far. And it does have the RGB. So it's basically an AIO without the tubes and the block. Yeah, you, you could just add a block to that and you have a whole loop. So oh. you could just add a CPU block or just a GPU block, or you can expand it with more radiators and build a whole system and use that to hide your pump reservoir. Okay, that's insane. I, I like the idea. What port options are we looking for on these? Um, so there's a number of orientations you can install it. It can be flat with the pump on the underside. Uh, ideally, it would be vertical with the ports at the top. They have six ports, so they're on the back, they're on the front, and they're on the end. So you can set it up that the plexi side of it, where you can see the RGB and the, and the coolant, is either like facing out of the case, so it could be out the front, or back into the case if it's in like a side position. And then have tubes anywhere you want, and you use the leftover return ports as the fill port. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Obviously, you don't want the radiator at the top with a DDC pump upside down. It's just not never a good idea, right? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll avoid having the pump upside down. You need to fill it. Uh, but it it would run if you could fill it. Yeah, if you so, could fill so it. So there's an opportunity that you can flip your whole system, bleed it, set it up, and then put it back in that orientation as well. Yeah. Uh, and what sizes are we doing this in? It, for now, uh, we'll see how it goes. It will be just a 360. So you effectively get an FLT 120 and uh, 240 radiator core. Um, and they're combined in a way that from the outside, it looks exactly the same as a P360. All the ports are placed in the same way. It uses the same extenders, same plugs. So you can use any of the accessory, uh, different finishes of fittings. Um, and you wouldn't tell it apart in the system. Awesome, so obviously it's Matrix 7 compatible then, so it'll work well with the brand new uh, units for everything else. So that's an awesome new product. I, I think that's something that I'll be using, definitely. What else have we got, Joe? Uh, so next around here, we have the newly released Velocity 2 edge blocks. Uh, here we see them in LGA 1700, and we also have M5 right around the corner. Oh, nice. So the LGA 1700 actually came out whilst we were here today. And then the, do we have any timeline on the AM5 or is it up in the air a bit now? It will be practically immediately. Oh. Uh, we sampled this to have one here uh, so that we could bring it with us. Obviously, we had to do that last year. Um, and the, the AM5 one's finished already. Okay. So obviously the Velocity Edge is quite edgy. Where did you get the design from? Uh, so it, this is really a combination of all of VK's 
uh, special edition blocks of the past. So some elements are coming through from the original Supremacy Edge. Uh, it also takes inspiration from the Strike, where you have a divide between the uh, second like added material and what's visible. But this time we wanted to include RGB and make lots more lighting features, coolant features, have a bit more visual block. So you will get half of your chosen coolant color and then the other half can either be the black or silver prisms. Awesome, nice. It definitely looks striking to the eye, you know, it's, it looks really nice. It's something that I think yep. it, it'll, it's, it's definitely a nice uh, new product. Does it have any new features compared to the Velocity 2 or are we keeping everything else the same? Uh, mechanically, it's exactly the same as a Velocity 2. From a cooling perspective, all the channels are the same, the cold plates are the same. That does mean that it's compatible with all the old accessories. So you can use the old contact frames, the old uh, direct die upgrade kits, and you can use it with this new block if you want a different look for the direct die stuff. Great, so it's the same great performance, just a updated vision, basically. I yeah. like it, I like it. Speaking of vision, I've noticed we've got something here with a screen on. What, what's that? Yes, we do. That is the very first flow meter from us. With the screen, all integrated, it works entirely uh, autonomously on its own, separate from the system. While it has a USB connector, it's only taking power from that. Uh, and it will just scroll through the temperature. So there's a temp sensor inside and the flow rate. There's a, a, a whole effect rotary flow meter inside. Okay, awesome. So you, you say it only takes power from the USB-C. So yeah. does that mean you can power it off anything like can you, a motherboard header, a, a USB port, a yeah. power bank, anything? Uh, if you want, you can power it from the phone charger. You can power it from, uh, by default, I expect an internal USB 2 header uh, to be the cable that we include so it doesn't waste your USB 3.1 ports that you want for your case. Um, there will probably be uh, just a simple utility to update the orientation of the of the screen if you install it in a different direction and maybe reskin it with different colors and things like that. Yeah, that makes sense. It's something I think the EK Ranger is missing. We didn't have a flow meter and that'll fit the bill, I think. Yep, nice. Yep. One, one other neat thing about it is you can fit them back to back with 28 millimeter spacing. So if you had a Matrix 7 distro and you had parallel tubes to the CPU, you could flip to like this and then have inlet and outlet temp. Oh, nice. So you can you can get your geek on and really, yeah. really get <laughs> into depth of what your system's doing. I like that. Nice. That's cool. Okay, what else have we got, Joe? So snuck in here at the back is a convection DRGB. Uh, because we moved the pump to the front of the FLTs and we've been using it so often uh, on the reflection twos and we're sticking with our mounting pattern that's cross compatible with D5s and DDCs. We wanted to give a bit of an update to the cover and we've included uh, an extra acetal plate that has uh, 20 DRGB LEDs behind it so you can have the same look uh, as our other box. Awesome, and what colors are these going to be available in? In the beginning, we'll have uh, black and silver. So they're, they're, they're rough uh, sandblasted black and silver finishes like we have on all special editions. Nice, I like them in there. I see over this side, we've got them with the top removed. Is that something that's by design or have we broke it? No, so a, a little bit differently from the originals uh, and a slightly friendlier way to manage the cables. You'll be able to thread the entire thing over the cables, so you just pull them through. You don't have to put them through the small hole in the yep. side. So should be a little simpler. Um, so you can then have this mounted and you mount it in the direction that you want the cables to come out, however you'd like. Uh, there's a little plate just to hold down the cables so they don't pull from the pump. Uh, and also if you sleeve them, that's a nice place to trap the sleeve in and keep it tight. Um, you would have access if you had like a legacy Vario pump uh, to adjust the speed, oh, nice. which is really handy for show builds. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say that's one thing that is 
I've done quite a lot is put a pump inside a build, taking it to a show, and then you think, actually, I'll turn this down a bit, and you just haven't got the access. And yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's not fun. M maybe that is special to us because we're building show builds all the time, but you, you know, you take something and you, you can't take a whole kit out. People just want to look at the build. Yeah. So you don't have a screen, you don't have a mouse, and you want to like speed the pump up to bleed it because air came around when you were driving, yeah. or you want to slow it down to make it quiet. Here, you'll be able to access it. So we loved it for this show. Uh, but um, yeah, that's, that's an old feature now. So after you've installed the pump and you put the cables through, then the RGB will come into place. It has adhesive on the back so you can stick it down um, or you can just ledge it in and it's fine. And the cover has uh, magnets to hold it on. So no matter what orientation you place the cables, you can put this with the EK batch upside down. <laughs> or the right way around. <laughs> nice, I like it. I like it. And obviously, those that are 3D savvy and have a 3D printer will probably end up modifying that somewhat because the first thing I thought of when I saw that was modification time. <laughs> yeah, you can be making a different cover. Or you just need a, something steel or another little magnet, put something else on there. Awesome, that's it. I do like them. They, they're quite interesting. What else have we got? Because I've seen all this color on this table. And for me, I like the orange. I saw the orange, I'm happy. What? What's that about? Yeah, we've, we've got orange and white, so you're yeah, happy I'm, I'm immediately. Done. Yeah, I'm done. Over, and we've also got a lot of other nice colors that I might like, like gray. I'm really into that. Yeah, uh, yeah so these are phase dampers for our new phase fan, which is very close to coming now. Oh, nice. Nice. Uh, we're expecting uh, a small performance boost over the FPT, uh, but the majority of it is about the quality, the quality of the components, and uh, just stepping forward with aesthetics. So it's a much cleaner design uh, with full sides and those uh, solid rubber corners that you can swap out. Awesome. So you, you mentioned that the quality has gone up on it. How, how so? How have we made this so much? nicer than say the FPT? Uh, so while it is still an FDB bearing for uh, quiet operation, especially at low speeds, uh, it's copper shielded, uh, which helps it to run true and helps it to run uh, much longer and without interference. So uh, it's an improved bearing. The um, injection moldings have been optimized a lot more, a lot more carefully. So we're able to achieve a much tighter tolerance on the tips. And the materials used everywhere for the frame, uh, it's uh, high quality uh, PBT and also the material of the blades and that helps us achieve a much, a much tighter spacing and it's essentially a, a perfected version of the same geometry. Nice, nice. So basically it's just a, a souped up FPT with these awesome little corners that you can change the color of. Now one thing I've noticed is the color matching between the sleeving and the corners is insane. Like, how, <laughs> how? Yeah, that, they are perfect. Um, generally, uh, the, the way these kinds of products are made, um, the people mixing the materials, they try and match a reference. So they try and match a Pantone or a Rao color or, or whatever it may be, but they're only so good. And then when it comes out, maybe all of our EK products will match, but they won't match other things um, that you might buy for your PC. And one of the, the nicest use of colors that we find in PCs is cable sleeving. So we have matched the MDPCX colors perfectly. We, pick, we picked out our favorite and used those as the reference sample uh, to formulate the rubber and, and the dyes inside the rubber. Speaking of weird and wonderful colors, I've noticed we've got some fittings as well that aren't the usual color. What's, what's going on there? Yeah, so it's not the end of our color journey. We also want to offer as many things as we can throughout the entire range. Black is always the most popular, but we would like to push it out and have more niche colors for, for very specific builds. So here we've sampled three different sets. Just a preview to see what people like. Uh, if any stand out to you, let us know. Yeah, yeah. Um, they may not become production versions immediately, but we will offer those to order. Awesome, so what you're saying is, if you went onto the website to order these, they wouldn't be in stock, 
but if you order them, they'd be made for your order specially. Yeah. Does that increase the lead time a lot, or can you, you know, is it going to be months, or how, how do you expect the lead time to work on that? Um, so you would have to pick all the fittings you want and add them to cart with that finish, and we may have to impose uh, some kind of MLQ to keep quantities high enough because we can't just, uh, you know, process one at once. Uh, we need we need a bulk of fittings, uh, but if, if the order is big enough that we can send it out immediately, uh, we'd expect that you would have your whole order done in one to two weeks. Oh, nice. That's that's fair. So, what are the colours that we've got? So we've got a pinky colour. Uh, a goldy colour and a kind of like a bronzy colour, but I'm sure they've got fancier names. <laughs> right, right, right. So um, previewed here we have rose gold, and that's a that's a bright finish of rose gold. So we'll call it mirror rose gold. Okay. Uh, we have a satin version of the gold plating that we already have, and we have a satin version of a bronze plating that we're calling royal bronze. So okay. in theory, anything could be satin or mirror and uh, there's multiple layers of, of plating. So the first adds the texture and the later ones add the color. So there could be a mirror version of uh, bronze. There could be a satin version of rose gold. Okay, nice. So any, any combination could be possible at some point. Yeah, so really this is where we need your help because take a look at these fittings figure out which ones you like the most and please do drop it in the comments because without the feedback we don't know what you like and it is something that you know we would like to hear about. One thing that we haven't looked at today are any graphics card water blocks and that's because we anticipate all of our existing 4080 blocks will be compatible with the 4080 super generation. We have that pretty much confirmed for the majority of manufacturers already. Um, we're waiting for final visual confirmation uh, to come when people have tried it out. That's awesome to hear about the GPU blocks. It uh, takes a load off my mind. And I think that wraps us up for today. We've already gone through all of the products on this table. I think we can agree that they're all pretty awesome. And one of my favorites, I think, is definitely the Edge. And we'll be taking that, putting it in a build, and that's going to be the Shock the Loop build called Black Ice, and that's with Attila. Hello everyone, it's Attila reporting here from the HQ with the latest of the STL or Shop the Loop builds which will be featured on our page. This particular Shop the Loop build features the silver version of the Velocity 2 Edge, the black one is also available and the AMD versions will be launching later within a few weeks, uh, maybe a month maximum, both black and silver versions. This build also features the white GPU block for the Asus 4090 Strix it has an experimental black coolant which we are still developing, which we have been testing for two years almost, but we don't want to launch a product which is not fully tested and we are sure that it will perform as it should. Other than that, white FPT fans, white radiators and a silver screen right there above the tubular combo in a vertical position. So let us know in the comment section about the build. Do you like it? Would you change anything? Do you like the black coolant? And now it's time to go back to US, to Las Vegas. EK Quantum X represents more than just a product line. It's a playground for our engineering team, where our R&D transforms its boldest ideas into reality, pushing the limits of what liquid cooling can achieve. It's time to take a closer look at the latest project, the amazing and impossible case that doesn't exist, the no case.
Welcome to another Quantum X series where we're going to try and make the case that doesn't exist. So uh, quite famously, we posted some renders of a whole loop, the, the whole system of EK parts without a case, without a motherboard, without any hardware as, a, as an ad campaign. And lots of people commented, what case did you use for the picture? Uh, I guess it's a standard internet comment, uh, but uh, it got us thinking like, could we make that case? You know, can the case that doesn't exist, exist? So with like a month and a half to CES, let's make it exist. The big challenge here is, of course, to hide the case, but also to have it still rigid enough to support the hardware that we can assemble it into the build and still pick it up, move it, ship it. You know, it can't be so fragile that you, you couldn't even move the build around. Hiding it, I already have good ideas how to camouflage it, where to put the structure, um, but making it strong enough that, it, that it's rigid and stuff doesn't uh, wobble or flex, that's a little more of a challenge. Okay, since all of this needs to get wrapped up before all of the machinists go on holiday for Christmas, Let's get to the CAD and get this ordered. Welcome back to this chassis that doesn't exist. Except now, it very much does exist. And this is the most that will be seen of it ever, probably, because as soon as it starts getting assembled, not only will it hide itself, but the hardware going on it, motherboard radiators, the distro plates, when everything comes together, pretty much all of the aluminium work will be hidden, at least from the front angles. So, uh, drink it in. We have the black version and the silver version. I think, for the build, I'm gonna be going with the black version because the silver version, you know, it really shows the detail of the case, so it's, it's best to see that uh, on its own, you know, standing on its own. Uh, we also have a new, very special distro plate for it. Some other little items to come uh, throughout the course of this build. So there's gonna be a lot of new, fresh EK hardware for 2024, and pretty much all of them are featuring in this build. Okay, so let's move this distro to the side and build the case. Ooh. Okay, so there we are, both cases together. It went really easily. All the threads were nice, all the screw holes lined up. There was no problem at all. I really didn't notice any major blemishes that would be a problem, so I think both are ready to go to CES. But obviously they'll need to build first. One thing that immediately was always under question was how strong are these gonna be versus how light are they gonna be? And could they be even thinner? You know, could some triangles be removed? Could they be simplified even more, more material taken out? Well, without a build, they feel extremely rigid, really strong, stronger than you would expect, perhaps as strong as uh, a typical like steel frame case. They really don't twist much. Of course, they twist more than uh, a completely solid aluminum torsion, but they really are quite rigid. So I thought, hmm, could have made it thinner. However, they're also impossibly light. The, the whole thing, uh, all assembled like this is 1.4 kilos. So it, it, it's not like picking up a case. It's, it's lighter than some of our blocks. The next and the heaviest part of the build is gonna be the distribution plate. You saw all of the pieces earlier, so I could show you building a whole distribution plate, but I thought I'd just ask Mitty to do it. Uh, I did tell him that he could 3D print the O-rings if he wanted to, you know, so he doesn't get all sad again. But this is actually so big, we don't have a 3D printer with a bed big enough for some of these O-rings. So he had to use O-ring cord and uh, make it all by hand. 
at least for the for the outer ones, I think some of the small ones are printed. So sorry, Mitya. Uh, let's put these on the kit. This is heavy. This is massively heavy compared to that. Uh, at least three times heavier. Anyway, let's put this on and hope it doesn't fall over. So there we go, both of them are together. All there is to do now is decide which color I use for which thing. And I'm sticking with what I said. The silver is nicer to look at the shapes of the case, to appreciate the detail in all of the parts when you see it without the build. And the black one, it's gonna hide a little bit more, blend in with components. It's gonna be easier for me to find a black motherboard, black power supply, black everything that this blends with and hides and fulfills the brief of not existing. Now that was fun and cool first day of EK Expo CES 24. I can't wait to see how Joe will build the no cache PC. Join us tomorrow for our second Expo video. Until then, don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. Stay cool with DK.